Hi, thanks for joining us today. If this ministry has impacted your life, we want to hear about it. You can send us your story at amen at vineyardchurch.com. Also, we would love if you would partner with us financially. You can go to vineyardchurch.com and click the Give Online or text your donation amount to 757-230-2110. Now here's this week's message. Well, God is all about relationships. The Bible says that when somebody asked Jesus, what is the most important thing? He said, love God with all your heart, all your strength, all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. He's talking about relationships with him and with other people. So we're talking this, in this series on listen about relationships because the foundation of a good relationship is being able to listen. Especially if you've been in a relationship a long time with somebody. Sometimes we can forget that art of listening. So we talked last week about how the Bible talks a number of times about the word hear and listen and over and over and over. It's about how God listens to us. Also how God wants us to listen to him. We'll talk about that uh, week four, the last week. Most important really, right? To hear from God. How many of you would like to hear from God a little better than you do? I know I would. And so I believe that when we talk about that, you will be able to have better discernment on what God has for your life, what he wants to say to you, and listen to him actually speak to you. So that's going to be exciting. Next week, we'll talk about even listening to your critics, because you know, there's people that don't like you, but still have something valuable to say. That's not easy to not get defensive and not to shut that person out, to say, I don't care what you have to say, because I don't like you. You don't like me. But we can still learn from those people. And today, we're going to talk about learning and listening from people that you love, people you're friends, people you care about. Because even those people, sometimes we don't, we, we lose our capacity, our interest in listening to them. And so we don't want to do that. We want to be able to keep that posture where we're listening to people, not taking people for granted, not assuming we already know what they're going to say, even though we might have heard it, you know, a thousand times. It's easy to tune people out. It's, it's easy to multitask. And technology and entertainment just adds to the problem, right? Where we can just try to multitask and, 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 and it just doesn't work. And we just tune people out. N notice the top verse on your outline. It says, lead with your ears in the message. Lead with your ears. Follow up with your tongue and let anger straggle along in the rear. The, communica the communication is the key. It's the currency of, le of, of leadership. He says, when you lead, make sure you're listening because if you're talking, it doesn't mean you're communicating. It just means you're talking. If you want to be communicating, you've got to be listening. And so that's important. And what happens when you listen? Number one, when we listen, we learn. When we listen, we learn. When we talk, we are not learning. When I'm talking, I already know what I believe. I already know my views. I'm learning zero when I'm talking. And it's true for you as well. But when we're listening, that's when we're learning. That's when we learn from other people. That's when we're able to say, okay, I'm getting it. And think of any setting, not just, you know, at school, but at work, in your home, any setting, any relationship. When you're listening, you are learning. 
A couple weeks ago, a pastor called me up in the area and said, hey, I would like to take you to lunch. I'll pay for it. So, of course, that always gets my, get, gets my attention. You're paying? Okay. Where are we going? And he goes, I want to spend a few, like an hour or two with you. I just want to pick your brain. And I told him, I go, it's probably slim picking. So I just need to let you know up front. He goes, but I'd like to talk. I want to, I have questions I would like to, I want to know some things. So we go to lunch and he talked the entire time. He, you know, he, uh, he never really asked me. I learned a lot about him. Evidently he wanted somebody to listen to him. No problem. I didn't have any problem listening to him. But if he wanted to hear and learn something from me, he did not get his money's worth. Because <laughs> he never asked me anything. Just talked. When we're talking, we're not learning. We are not. So it's when we're listening is when we're learning. Proverbs 18.2 says, A fool finds no pleasure in understanding, but delights in airing his own opinions. It says that a fool loves the sound of their own voice. They just, no, 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 talk and talk and talk. You, if you were to like write it down, you say, there's some run on sentences there, man. I, you know, they don't even take a breath. You know, there's no, there's no periods anywhere. They just talk and talk. He says, you're not learning anything doing that. Proverbs 1, 5 says, let the wise listen and add to their learning. And so I don't think of this as like a purely academic thing, like it's only in school when professor so-and-so, or even at church, you know, when pastor so-and-so says something. Think of it just in all your relationships. If you're wise you're in your learning, then you need to be listening. You can learn from everybody. People have a lot that they can, if you're listening, that they can share with you. Sometimes people that have been married for a long time, they stop listening. Because they, you know, I've been married to you for years. I've heard it all. You know, I don't need to listen to you anymore. And they might not say it like that, but they're thinking it. And they just shut down. And unfortunately, what happens is people change. And if you stop listening, next thing you know, you don't know that person. Sometimes people will say that. Those couples will come up and they'll go, you know what? We're going to get separated because I don't know this person anymore. And I believe it. I believe it because if you stop listening, people change, people grow. And so you're, if you stop listening, you're not growing with them. So we need to be listening. We have to, even though you've been with somebody for a long time, you can't just shut them out. You're always tuning in. When I was first married to Sharon, uh, I'm t I tend to be a fix-it guy, kind of like a lot of guys, actually, you know, a stereotypical fix-it person. And so Sharon would, you know, she would tell me, some things she's going through. And I would, I knew the answer. <laughs> you know, so I'd just stop her in the midst of the sentence. You don't have to go on any longer. Good news, I have the answer for you. <laughs> that didn't go over too well. Because <laughs> she didn't want somebody to fix her. She wanted somebody to listen to her. And that's an art that I am still learning, actually. You know, learning to listen, learning not to always fix, learning that somebody might just want to be heard. Maybe, you know, there's value in that. And so we who are going to become wise are learn to be listeners. And we listen and we gain wisdom. Proverbs 9, 19 says, instruct a wise man and he will be what? Wiser still. There's room for growth for everybody. Wiser still. Take Teach a righteous man and he will add to his learning. The truth is we can learn from everybody. There's things that you know that I don't know. Everybody in here knows stuff that I don't know. And if, I'm, if I get a chance to talk to you and I'm listening, I can grow wiser. I can grow, deepen my understanding. Now, if I, I, can, I can shut down and say, oh, well, you're, you're young. So you don't have the education I have. You don't have the life experience I have. And I can go ahead and dismiss any person, and next thing I know, I'm not learning anything. But that's not what the wise person does. The wise person realizes, I can learn from every single person. Everybody. You know, parents, especially in Proverbs, are encouraged to be people of, that listen, but also for kids to listen to their parents. Here's one here, Proverbs 1, 8 says, Listen, my son, to your father's instruction, and do not forsake your mother's teaching. You know, in the biblical culture, the 
the uh, parents would instruct their children of their trade, their craft that they knew, their skills, and it would pass down through the family unit. But it also, there was more than just or the skills. They also taught their faith. They taught their value system, their morality, their, their wisdom passed down through the family unit. And this is really how it happens today. Through the family, through close friends. This is the core of how those things are taught. Faith, morals, values, wisdom. So we want to keep that open. We want, and, and so sometimes kids just decide, I'm not going to listen to my parents anymore. I'm done. That's unfortunate. Because God instructs us through our parents. You say, well, my parents aren't perfect. Well, yeah, that's true. Sometimes you do have to eat the meat and spit out the bones. But God uses parents to instruct us. And so, how do you keep that from happening? If you're a parent, you go, well, I don't want my, my kids to shut down and not listen to me anymore. When somebody says, I'm done listening to my parents, it doesn't mean you won't learn. You'll still learn because the world, te- the world has a way of teaching us. It's just a harder way. It's just a more difficult path. Usually parents don't wish that on their kids. They would rather have that open line of communication. And so, if you're a parent and you don't want your kids to become adversaries, you want them to be allies. You want them to listen to your advice, listen to what you have to say, listen to the wisdom that you have. How do you keep this adversarial thing happening? Well, let me just say that they are free-willed spirit. They have their own free will, so there's no guarantee. There's nothing you can do, parents, that will guarantee your kids will always listen to you. So, just, and sometimes parents that their kids do well, they... Usually as parents, we take too much credit for when our kids turn out well. You know, our kids are doing great. Man, your kids are doing, you're an amazing parent. A lot of parents, yeah, it's me. I did an amazing job. Would you like me to tell you about it? (laughs) And then when our kids go sideways, we tend to take too much blame for that. You know, what did I do wrong? What, and we, the truth is our kids have their own free will. We do influence them, but they have their own free will. So there's no guarantee that your kids will shut down and stop listening to you. But here's the number one thing you can do to most likely keep that open, that place where they'll listen to you. You ready for it? Listen to them. You listen. Listen to them. When you listen to them, you say, I care about you. You, You're worthy of my time. I'm interested in you. I love you. I care about you. And that is most likely going to keep that open. And you earn a right to be heard. You know, I don't, shouldn't have to earn a right to be heard. I created them. Well, you know, maybe that was your parents' attitude. But listen, in most cases, that's not enough. Most people want to be heard. They want to know you care about them. And so by listening, you are going to impact your kids in a powerful way like that. You got to be careful to not fall into anger also because as parents, not just parents, bosses, and in any relationship, we, we get anger, right? We get frustrated. There's a lot of things that set off our anger. A- anger is a secondary emotion. So if you take the time to really think, what, why did I get anger? You'll find out maybe it's insecurity, fear, all, all kinds of things set us up. But we need to take time and say, I don't want anger to, to, to hijack my conversations and my relationships because it shuts down that, that, that whole area of listening. People just go, well, they get defensive. James 1's talking about that when he says, my dear brothers, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. For man's anger does not bring about the righteousness, the righteous life that God desires. And so we get defensive. And, and so he says, don't let anger do that. Don't let it hijack you. And everybody has anger issues, more, some more than others. I have had, I have anger. It comes out of nowhere. All of a sudden, boom, I'm angry. I go on. Oh, how did that happen? A few months ago, I was, uh, it's my job to book for my handball group that I play with. I, I usually book the, um, uh, the courts. I called up in the morning and, uh, they booked them, but they booked them on the wrong day. I told them one day they booked them on another day. So we all show up. Some of these guys driving from Newport news and different, different cities. It's 40, 45, 50 minute drive for them one way. And they show up and our court's given away to somebody else. And in fact, all the courts are gone and they're all looking at me like, 
uh, Andy, so I go downstairs and I go, hey, listen, uh, I called up, I reserved the court. They looked, they go, oh yeah, we wrote it in the wrong day, sorry. And all of a sudden, <laughs> I was out of my happy place at that point. I was like, you know, like not saying nice things like, hey, listen, you get up there, you tell them. I, you know, these guys driving from, you know, I have all my reasons and I'm, and I'm kind of real animated, excited tones that are communicating unhappiness. So, so after that, you know, after I come down off that, I realize, well, that probably wasn't the best way to handle that. You know, I mean, I could have done better. And so I was, oh, I'm kind of upset at myself, discouraged. And so I go and get some cards because uh, there was three people involved. I get three Starbucks cards, put them in there. And then I write a, a, a personalized note for each one. Just said, you know what? I'm better than that. I'm sorry. I, I, you, know, I, I, you know, mistakes happen. And I apologize. And I gave it to them. They seemed, they seemed happy about that. But I did that more for me than for them. Because I don't want to be like that. I don't want to be the guy that blows up with anger and everything shuts down. About six months ago, a pastor called me and he was accusing another pastor friend of mine of some wrongdoing that he didn't do. And I knew he didn't do. And so I'm, but immediately I just kind of go to his defense. I get, I get all angry. I'm starting to, you know, be very animated with negative feelings. People are looking in my office like, is he okay? You know, is there a problem in here? And, you know, it's just, the conversation went nowhere because I'm all upset. And that's the other person's all upset. They're angry. It's so after we hang up, I come to my senses again. You see a pattern? I, you know, it takes me a while, you know. <laughs> oh, wow, I could have, you know, that's probably not the best thing, you know, two pastors, you know, yelling at each other. So I call them up and, hey, listen, you know, I can do better than that. I don't need to, you know, I'm sorry. And he apologized and, you know, we moved forward. But just anger will shut it down. It just causes the whole thing to just go grinding to a halt. And everybody gets defensive. It's not helpful. So we got to be careful with that. Second Timothy 2 says, don't have anything to do with foolishness and stupid arguments because you know they produce quarrels. He's talking about this argumentation and anger and the Lord's servant, which is all of us, not just one person, all of us. The Lord's servant must not quarrel. Instead, he must be kind to everyone, able to teach, not resentful. So people don't learn anything when we get all angry. So we've got to be careful about that. When we listen, we love also. See, when, we, when you listen, you are saying, I love you. I care about you. You are important to me. And it, it touches us in a place deeply that really nothing else can do. It's a unique way of saying I love you that is uncomparable to anything else. So when we listen, when we really, really listen, it expresses love. You know, who listens to you because he loves you as God. God loves you. He, it's not like he created the universe and then created you and, and all these people and they're, you know, they've got, you know, lots of complaints all the time and he's, he's slots sometimes. Oh my goodness, I got to listen to these people at least, you know, I can't really call myself God if I'm going to listen to them. And so he kind of like, you know, puts up with this bunch of whiners. What is going on here? No, it's, that's not his, God loves us. That's why he's, fully engaged in prayer. We might not be, but he is. He loves us. No, notice this. The psalmist talks about this when he says in Psalm 116, he says, I love the Lord for he heard my voice. He heard my cry for mercy because he turned his ear to me. I will call on him as long as I live. Why do I love the Lord? Because he hears me. He listens to me. He hears my cry. He's interested in me. See, that is resonates with the psalmist. It resonates with us. And God, who, if we really believe it, we think, you know, why do I pray? God loves me. And that's one of the reasons I love him. He loves to listen to me. It's a form of love when we listen. It's a powerful form of love. Some of the people that I think listen and love the best are our prayer teams. They come up here at the end of each service and Part of what we do when, we, when somebody says, hey, I want to be part of the prayer team is we have a training and we teach them to listen. A big part of prayer, being on a prayer ministry team, is learning to listen. Listen to the person. Listen to what they're saying. Not just what they're saying, but what's really going on. And then also listening to God. You, we talk about it like we say, give one ear to the person and one ear to God, to the Holy Spirit. And so you listen to God. What, what do you want to say right now? What do you want to do right now to this situation? You know, what's going on here? Because we need direction on how to pray, how to, how, to, how, to, how to best love on this person. And we're doing it by listening. 
That's why if you've ever come up to receive prayer, you've walked away feeling loved. And they're good listeners. Listening is so powerful. It says, I love you. Another thing that helps with that when we're listening is just good questions. Thinking, you know, going beyond just the surface, whatever, just the stated thing that said, you ask probing questions because you're interested. I want to go deeper. I want to know really what's going on. Somebody comes in to your house and they look a little down. You go, hey, how are you doing? And they go, oh, I'm okay. You, then you probe a little more. Well, no, really, how are you doing? I'm fine. Then you could say, okay, well, let's go to work. I'm glad you came over. Or you could say, no, no, no. I can see there's something going on. What's going, what, let me know. What's, what's happening? You, you, you go beyond. Just be, Why? Because you love the person. You care about them. You're worth it. And probing questions help us to get beneath the surface. Proverbs 20 verse 5 says, the purposes of a man's heart are deep waters. Another translation says a deep well, but a man of understanding draws them out. So by listening, by asking questions, we become more understanding. We are a person of understanding because we're drawing those out. We're asking questions. This is important. I want to know what's really going on instead of just, you know, blah, 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 blah. Because we can easily just fall into that, especially if somebody we've known for a long time. Oh, it's, they've got another problem, you know, blah, 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 blah. Remember uh, those of you who uh, are my age-ish, Charlie Brown, you know, when his teacher, and I know they have a new animated one, but I didn't get a chance to see the new Peanuts one, but Charlie Brown's teacher, do you remember the sound that the adult teacher would make when Charlie Brown's trying to listen to her? I, I, say it out loud if you remember. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Wah, wah, wah. Charles Schultz, when he was, he had made this comic strip, did not feature any adults at all. So they were trying to make this animated uh, film based on the comic strip in 1967, I Love You, Charlie Brown. And they were trying to figure out, how do we do that? You know, how do we make, so they, they got a trombone player. They said, and, they, and, he, and he made this sound. They said, yeah, that's probably the way it sounds to a kid. And wah, 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 wah. You know, you're going on one of those conversations deep into the night trying to work through an issue. Wah, 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 wah. <laughs> it's not listening, right? So we, if we're going to love on somebody, we listen, we ask questions, we're interested, we're people of understanding. Notice this next passage. This is about a woman who listened to Jesus. And he singles her out and praises that. He says, as Jesus and his disciples, they're in Luke 10, as Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, you are worried and upset about many things. But only one thing is needed. Mary has chosen what is better and it will not be taken away from her. So you have these two people. One is you have Mary who listened. Another, you have Martha who was distracted. Now, did one not love Jesus? Did, didn't they both love Jesus? Well, certainly, right? They both loved Jesus. They were just expressing it differently. Martha was serving that's a legitimate way to love somebody, by serving them, no doubt. Serving the other was listening. So the question really needs to be asked, what did Jesus want? How did he want to be loved? Well, evidently, if we, by reading the story, we see that he wanted, he wanted to be listened to. And that's a problem we have sometimes is we think we're acting lovingly and we don't understand why it's not being reciprocated or taken that way. You know, a dad or a husband will, will work hard, provide for their home. And that's his way of showing love. But maybe his wife and his kids wanted just to be heard, wanted to be understood. Or the wife works hard and makes nice meals and makes sure the house is clean. That's the way she's showing her love for her family. But maybe the husband and the wife, uh, husband and the kids just wanted to be 
heard and understood. Or maybe you have a good friend and you do a lot with that friend and you hang out with them all the time and you go do fun stuff. But really what the friend needs is to be heard and to be understood. Now those are hard. Sometimes when you're not, it takes a lot of effort. Sometimes you're not in the mood to listen. But listen, this is the what really impacts people the most is when we listen to them. We hear what's going on. We take the time and we say, you are important. Certainly that's what Mary did. Martha got distracted. She was going in a, in a whole bunch of other ways. She was very busy. And she had legitimate reasons to be busy. And we always have reasons why we don't need to listen. We don't have time to listen. And we, you know, maybe we just get caught up with entertainment or technology or the way we unwind or our busy schedule. And then the people who we love are not being loved by us. Stephen Covey coined the phrase, seek first to understand then to be understood. Our tendency is to do the opposite, right? We want to be understood. Then, you know, I'm open to hearing your view. He says, no, no, no. Highly successful people, they always seek first to understand. And he says, what, the three things you want to avoid is this, ignoring people when they're talking. If you're trying to understand them, ignoring them obviously is not helpful. And it frustrates them. Pretending is something you want to avoid. That's where you're ignoring them, but you're pretending you're not. You know, so you can do that easier on the phone, right? Uh-huh, uh-huh. And you're kind of like looking on, on your laptop or whatever you do, you know. Uh-huh. Put it on silent. Walk away. Go get some coffee. Come back. I'm so sorry to hear that. <laughs> and you hope that one worked, you know. It's just pretending. And then he says also selective listening. He goes, that's, you want to avoid that. Selective listening is when somebody says something, you get some of it. But you kind of cherry pick and you miss the message. Somebody says to you, you know, I'd like to go to the mall or buy a dress because I got that new promotion. I want to look good on my first day at the new promotion. I also would like to be promoted again. And what do you hear? I want to go spend some money at the mall. You know, so they just kind of, that's not what they said. Well, kind of, but not really. It's a selective listening. It says those things mess up communication. It says instead we want to be empathetic listeners where you are actively trying to see life from their perspective. You're trying to see reality from their, from, from, from their perspective. What, 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 you know, get in their shoes. What, help me to, I'm, I want to see what you see. I want to see things that you see. Very difficult to do. But it's a great way to, empathetic listening is a great way to show somebody you care about them. And people, that meets a deep need of ours. A little girl was shopping with her mom at Toys R Us looking for a doll. And there was tons of dolls. All of these dolls. It was overwhelming. And the dolls did all kinds of things. Some dolls walked, some talked, some laughed, some even wet themselves. Little kid was playing with all these dolls and finally she finds this doll that doesn't do anything. She pushes it and she looks for any knobs. It's nothing. It's just the doll doesn't do anything. So she looks to her mom. She goes, what does this doll do, mom? The mom wisely said, that doll listens. <laughs> Which one do you think? That's the one she got. I want this one that listens. We need to be listen, listeners. When we listen, we learn. When we listen, we are loving. And also when we listen, we grow. We grow. We grow in a depth that other, we, we see things other people don't see. We discover things about somebody that other people don't know about. We discover, we, we learn the secrets of people's hearts. We understand what makes them tick. But it all comes from listening, from being an attentive listener. I want to, I want to really dial in and, and understand what you're saying. I want to go back to Mary and Martha again, this story. They lived in Bethany with their brother Lazarus. Remember, Mary was the one who was listening. Martha was the one who was distracted. Well, Jesus comes back. This story happens. This, this happens soon after that other event. He's back in Bethany. And here's what happened. Mark chapter 14, beginning in verse 3. While he was in Bethany, reclining at the table in the home of a man known Simon the leper, a woman came with an alabaster jar of very expensive perfume made of pure nard. She broke the jar and poured the perfume on his head. 
Some of those present were saying indignantly to one another, why this waste of perfume? It could have been sold for more than a year's wages and then money given to the poor. And they rebuked her harshly. Leave her alone, said Jesus. Why are you bothering her? She's done a beautiful thing to me. The poor you will always have with you and you can help them anytime you want, but you will not always have me. She did what she could. She poured perfume on my body beforehand to prepare for my burial. I tell you the truth, wherever the gospel is preached throughout the world, what she has done will also be told in memory of her. So who is this mysterious woman? Well, we're told in John chapter 11 and John chapter 12 that it's the same lady. It's Mary. It's the same one who is listening to Jesus at his feet. Now she has this perfume and she's pouring it on his head. And it's expensive perfume. In fact, she gets rebuked because it's so much money, this perfume. Why would you do that? What people did before banks is they would take their, their money that they would earn and they would invest it in commodities like, like, or land or commodities like gold or pearls or perfume, maybe livestock. So this, is, this might be this lady's entire life savings. It's a whole year's wage set aside. Could you imagine, think in your mind, what you make in a year, and then think of spending that amount of money on one bottle of perfume. We're not talking poison here or Chanel, right? We're talking some seriously expensive perfume. What do you even do with that kind of perfume, right? Just a little dab will do you, not much. You're going to, well, that stuff's expensive, super expensive. And she takes it, she breaks it, and puts it all over Jesus. She was loving Jesus. Why would she do that? Well, her brother had just been raised from the dead. Maybe that's why. Maybe, maybe she was so grateful. Here, her brother who she loved, and, you know, he raised, he raised him from the dead. Maybe that. But, you know, the text seems to indicate something even more than that. Because Jesus says he points to the fact that she did it to prepare his burial. See, Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem to be crucified. That's where he's headed. It's on his docket. The next thing up, Jerusalem. The disciples, now he had been talking about going there to die, but the disciples weren't listening. They were all interested in what, you know, all this, he's going to go in and triumph and he's going to ounce the Romans, bring in his new kingdom and who's going to sit on his right hand, who's going to sit on his left. And they're, they're thinking like this and Jesus had been talking about his death, but one person was listening. It's Mary. She dialed in. And she showed it, see, by taking her life savings and putting it on Jesus. And then Jesus says, you know, whenever the gospel is told, I want this story. This, he memorializes this event. He doesn't do that for anything John or Andrew or Peter, any of them do or, or anything they say. He does it for this lady because she listened. You see, when we listen, when we really listen, other people might not hear it, but you'll hear it. You'll hear what's really going on in somebody's life. You'll, you'll be able to dial in. And I know there's more and more books and literature. And I'm thankful for this, you know, emotional intelligence. But I'm telling you, it's more than just reading a book. It's putting your heart and your soul into it, saying, I really care about you. And I'm going to listen to your heart. I'm going to listen to your, 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 what makes you tick. Your, what's driving you. And when you listen to somebody like that, you build enormous relational equity with that person where you, you make emotional deposits in their life. And this, that's, that yields benefits. That yields benefits. But it's really not the reason you're doing it. You're doing it because you care. You love that person. So we listen because we want to learn. We learn when we listen. We listen because we want to love. And listening is loving, certainly. But we also listen because we want to grow and we want to better understand ourselves and the person that we're interacting with. Let's bow our heads. Would you stand with me? We'll close in prayer. I want to just kind of lock some of this in before the Lord and just say, God, 
come and do your work. I want to invite our prayer team so you can come on up as they're working their way up. If you'd like to receive prayer today, I, I invite you just to slip out where you're at before you go get prayer. Be loved on. Let us listen to your story and pray for you. Let's pray. Father, thank you for being a good listener. But you're not just putting up with us. You care about what we say. And because you're a loving God, you, you love us. And because of that, we love you. Lord, thank you for demonstrating what it means to lead with our ears. Let us be people that lead with our ears. That seek to first understand before we seek to be understood. I specifically pray for parents. If you're a parent here and you have an adversarial relationship, I pray God's hand on your life. I would think, I pray that we talked about when we were singing earlier about how we step into an eternal reality where God starts to move on, on, in our life. I pray that for you. That you see things fundamentally change in your relationship with your child. That God gives you opportunities to speak, but also to listen. Maybe you're a kid. You're an adult child. And you're saying, I'm done listening to my parents. I'm done. My prayer for you is that you would lower your fist, lower your defenses. Maybe there's some more wisdom to be learned. Lord, I pray for parents that are beating themselves up. They're hard on themselves. God says that that's condemnation, that shame, that's not from him. Let that go. God says that when we come to him and we ask for just a clean slate, ask for forgiveness, he says he gives us a brand new start. Some of you, you need to walk into that. God listens to your prayers. He cares about you. He invites you into a relationship with him. If you've never asked Christ into your life, do that, would you? Just say, God, I want to live a life that's honoring to you. I want to step into eternity and see you move in my life now. Not just when I die, but now. So would you say, I put my faith in Christ. Thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross. Help that to resonate. Everybody here was singing earlier about Jesus is alive and talking about Jesus. Help Hope that to resonate. It's, that's true. I sense God's Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Christ active in my life. Would you do that? Just say, God, let me know that that's true. Speak to me, Lord. And, and we'll talk about that in a, two, in a couple of weeks. Father, I pray that, that everybody here can, will be able to hear you. If not today, Lord, in two weeks when we talk about that. Father, I pray that you speak to every single person here. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless. Thanks for coming. Thanks for listening to this week's message. We hope you enjoyed it. Don't hesitate to write us your story at amen at vineyardchurch.com. And we'll see you next week.